Joining me now for right versus left, I have political commentator Chloe Dobbs on the show for the first time. Welcome, Chloe. And we've got Bill Rammel, former Labour Party, former Labour MP and Minister. Going to get straight to it. Uh, it was this week again, well, last weekend, we saw over a 1,000, or nearly a 1,000, uh, migrants cross the channel into this country. Nothing seems to be working. I mean, uh, the, the government was saying, and number 10 was saying, that um, crossings are down by 36%. They're now up by 40%. Uh, they're now saying it's, it's the weather. Uh, the good weather is allowing more people to come over the channel. Uh, we was making the argument a few months back that they, it was the bad weather that was stopping people. They wouldn't agree to that. So, Chloe, what's going to stop this once and for all? I think that we need to tow the boats back to France. It's the only way that we're going to stop it. I think this Rwanda plan, we can give it a shot, but I doubt that it's really going to do anything. And it's going to cost us apparently 172 grand per person. We're now offering them three grand free pocket money as an incentive, apparently, yeah. uh, which is completely insane. I'm sure a lot of hardworking Brits that can't afford to put food on the table would quite like free grand at a time like this. Uh, Rishi Sunak just doesn't have the backbone to do what's necessary. OK, well... Uh, I think we need to tackle the problem, but we need to put it in context. It's about 30,000 a year coming over on the boats. The numbers of people being granted visas last year was 1.4 million. You know, the government has many more levers as, at its disposal to tackle uh, immigration. Uh, I think the Rwanda bill is a gimmick. It's hugely expensive. It's legally full of holes. And I think you need to uh, get better returns agreements in place. You need to clear the asylum backlog, which is what Labour did when we were in power. You know, the net migration figure is now three times as high as it you was. You say that, though, but what happens when you see some of these young men that come over, and we know that they do it, they, they lie about where they come from. So why can you have a returns agreement with a country when these people are blatantly lying on which country they've started off from? But they always have. I mean, when I was a minister in the last Labour government, we were grappling with the uh, asylum challenge. I will acknowledge in our early years in government, we didn't get it right. But over the last five, six years, we dramatically reduced the number of asylum seekers. It needs serious application in, go in government, not gimmicks and stunts, which is what we're having from Sunak. Chloe? I think that, yes, we need to clear the asylum backlog and so yeah, but on. But when we clear the backlog, what happens? What we do is we pass about 80% of the claims to give them, uh, give them refugee status. Then They then go into social housing and, and take up all the housing, and the other 20% just go missing. But, but you begin to reduce the pull factor. One of the biggest pull factors for illegal migrants coming to this country is they know they'll come here and their claim won't, won't be dealt with for two or three years. That's, that's a, they a know that they'll sign. come here and get a five-star hotel to stay in for free. That's they, what brings them they here. They don't get five-star hotels. Oh, I've seen plenty of videos of the accommodation that they get. It looks pretty nice, some of Neither it. Neither you or I would want to live in the accommodation that they're living in. Regardless, they're getting a free home for coming here illegally they've broken the law and you've pointed out the fact that the numbers are much smaller than net legal migration however the problem with this even though the numbers are much smaller is that these are undocumented young males a lot of the time coming from the countries that have the worst record in the world for their treatment of women by the way mm. um, the home office is refusing to reveal to GB News the number of asylum seekers who have committed uh, sexual crimes um, this is extremely scandalous. That's why, even though the numbers are small, it's such an issue. This is a really big national security issue. Well, I mean, I actually agree with you. If you've committed a sexual crime, a crime, you shouldn't be eligible uh, for asylum. But we country. shouldn't have to wait for them to come here and rape somebody before we kick them out. No, and that's... Look at Abdul Azidi. He was yeah. allowed to stay here despite the fact that he was found guilty of sexual assault, I think on two occasions. Yeah. He was then allowed because he came up with some bogus Christianity conversion, right? He shouldn't have come here in the first place. He came here on a lorry illegally. He should have been kicked out immediately, straight away. But, but you, and it wouldn't have happened. Those people wouldn't have been sexually assaulted and that woman and her children would not have had acid thrown over them. But you can't assess that all in the moment. People have to have a right, and, and you know, we're party to international treaties that I think are the right way forward. You have to have a right to make a claim, but we need... A right to, to break into a country. No, no, you need to tackle the problem at source. And, you know, I'm not saying something that is impossible. We did it under the last Labour government, and we had dramatically fewer numbers than we're having at the moment. The government is not serious about tackling the problem. So, Chloe, is, is there a Labour government? It looks like we're going to get a Labour government at the back end of this year. Are they going to solve this crisis? I highly, highly doubt it. I don't think Keir Starmer has the backbone to do it, nor does Rishi Sunak. Um, but I think Labour will be worse because what 
Keir Starmer has done well on up to now is just not being the Tories. And he's been able to get away with not really revealing what his policies are. But as we get closer and closer to the election and he actually needs to say what he's going to do, we're realising that a lot of his policies are absolutely bogus. So when he was challenged on what are you going to do about the boats, he suggested that we start cozying up to EU even more and come closer and closer to becoming a member again to, to solve this problem, which to me uh, sounds like dangerous territory. And uh, that's because we do need to cooperate with Europe. You know, when we were in the European Union, we didn't have 30,000 people coming across the channel uh, through the boats because we had effective returns agreements in place. And I tell you this, if you say that... Yeah, they, but you say uh, that, Bill, but when we were in the European Union, the, the Europe didn't have you know, hundreds of thousands of people coming over the, over the Mediterranean as well, did they? I, mean, I know there was a trickle started a few years back, but not to the amount of what we're getting today through Libya, through Italy, through the rest of Europe. Well, look, there's a whole series of worldwide uh, things happening that are growing the number of No, but of, you've of just claims. stated, Bill, that the, the, the Labour was much better on this, and, and they weren't. They didn't have the situation to deal with what we've got today. Oh, we do. Go back to some of the influxes we had as a result of Afghanistan, as a result of uh, Iraq yeah. when we were in government. We actually tackled it. And you say we're not serious about it. I'll tell you this. I was not only a minister, I was the MP for a very, very marginal seat. And every conversation I had with Tony Blair and Gordon Brown in the last five or six years in government, the first thing they asked me was, ha what, what's, what's the perception of asylum and immigration uh, in your constituency? Because they were concerned genuinely about tackling the numbers. And we did. You know, look at, look at it in 2004-05, and the numbers were high. Look at the numbers by 2010, and they were down significantly. I'm pretty sure back in the day, I think Tony Blair suggested offshore, in, uh, offshore processing. We looked at it, uh, and I was part of that, but it was for processing. It wasn't for leaving them there per permanently. Okay. I think that's one of the fundamental problems with the Rwanda scheme. Would that be a deterrent, Chloe, processing them offshore, maybe you know, somewhere thousands of miles away in a British colony? Uh, potentially, it would be better than what we've got now, where they just come here and sit in a hotel at the taxpayer's expense and wreak havoc in our communities. Um, but I don't think that Rwanda is a scary place to send people to. It is a safe country. And it's not a safe country. You know, not only the international courts, but domestic law has found uh, Rwanda to be unsafe. Uh, and, you know, I, I, I think the government needs to do its work more effectively and isn't more seriously. UN, isn't the UN being quite hypocritical there? They're telling us off of trying to send people to Rwanda whilst they've actually sent asylum seekers themselves to Rwanda, right? Yeah, I, I, I'm not responsible for the United Nations. What I do know So is, you think they were wrong to no, say no, that? Yeah, yeah, and I think we need to operate within the law. You can do that effectively, but you need to do your homework, you need to do your research, and you need to choose the you, location. You say operate there. within the law, Bill, but this is the thing that really, really winds <coughs> my constituents up. We keep hearing about international obligations, international law. People in places like Ashfield, where I represent, do not lie awake at night night worrying about our reputation on the international stage they want our country to be safe they want our borders to be secure and they want we, they want us to stop these people coming into the country they are like chloe says i agree with chloe surprisingly they are breaking into our country they are abusing our asylum system they are living in four or five star hotels and then when we clear the backlog which we seem to be bragging about all the time that does no good at all because then they go into social housing and the rents in Asheville now are up 30 40 percent because housing now is at the premium chloe so on the point about social housing, you've got so many Brits who are really struggling with the cost of living crisis, who can't afford to pay their bills. And meanwhile, we give, what, about half of social housing to immigrants? Yep. Which is just absolutely insane. We need to be putting Britain first. And, and we live in an era where people seem to think that it's racist if you prioritise a Brit over an immigrant. But I think that's just basic morality. That doesn't mean you shouldn't care about people at all from the rest of the world, but Brits have to come first. Yeah. Brits are being put at the back of the queue for everything and, and now we live in a world where if you are a young white straight british male you're seen as evil it's, it's horrendous I, I, I don't think that's true and a whole host of local authorities are now designing their housing allocations policy where residency and longevity of residency is now the, re the key requirement uh, and lee you talk about you know just ripping up international treaties and obligations. The problem is that's a slippery slope. I was a foreign office minister, went round the world mm. trying to attract investment to this country. One of the things people are really attracted by is the certainty and the rule of law. Once you start
start rip, ripping up your international legal obligations, business is, is going to say, yeah. what's next? And that's going to yeah. cost us... And but I'll tell you what my um, constituents uh, are bothered about, Bill. That is letting rapists and murderers and sex offenders into our country, which we seem to be doing now and all, on a daily basis. We should stop that. We should stop that. And, and the way you stop it is by stopping them coming here in the first place. Turn backs, I agree with that. Mm. I agree with taking them back the same day. But there's no political will in that place over there, Chloe, to do this. And I don't think the Labour Party will do it either. Because, remember, when we've been debating this in Parliament for the last four years, it's always a Labour lot that keeps saying all the time that 80% of these people coming over are genuine asylum seekers. That's and we know, I mean, we know they're not. I mean, just look at the videos and the pictures of the boats coming in. If these are genuine asylum seekers, where are the women and children? Why aren't these men bringing their uh, vulnerable family members with them? Yeah. Just look at the pictures. It's all young males. Clearly, these are economic migrants. Now, I don't deny that some of them may be genuine refugees, but it looks like the vast majority are economic migrants. And also, if they are supposedly refugees, they are coming from northern France. So that is a safe place. They do not need to risk their lives and pay thousands of, um, thousands of pounds or thousands of euros to some illegal gang members to come across to Britain. But, but you hit the nail on the head. In the European Union, we had the Dublin Convention and we could secure returns to country of origin elsewhere in the European Union. But they throw now, their we, passports, we, yeah, but, we don't but, even know but, where but they're we're from. We're not in the European Union, but we need better cooperation and management with other European countries, and we're not going to get that by throwing stones from the sidelines. Okay.